Hello and welcome back to Catch and Cook California. I'm Kevin. I'm Hunter. <laughs> We're going out on my dad's boat and we are going for crab. Dungeness season just opened for sport for recreational harvesters like us. It's still closed for commercial, so we're gonna go out and see what we can get. Here on a beautiful day and man it's like summer isn't this nice out here usually <laughs> it's pretty darn nice man no clouds in the sky feels like 70 degrees it's probably 68 but we're in the Sun it's just beautiful chicken in the bag and there's also a, a pocket down here but I've got it zip tied right now and you can use that as your bait bag so we are using the Promar style traps. These are what we refer to as volcano traps. They're actually called hoop nets. So these are hoop nets, not pots, right? Correct. And then... And not traps. And not traps. At the beginning of the season, because of whale entanglement, they are requiring that everybody use hoop nets, which must be monitored every two hours. And they assume that if you see a whale where you're pulling up your crab pot, you will move your crab pot to an area where you're not likely to entangle the whale. All the traps and pots are closed until the whales migrate out of the area and then they'll allow them. That so, also means that commercial season is closed until the correct. whales move on, that's right? That's correct. And so if you're going to invest in a crab trap of some kind, get these uh, I call them a volcano trap because that's what they look like to me, but they're called hoop nets. And so they make two different types of hoop nets, the ones that lay flat and then these volcano style where it sticks up and it's got a second rigid ring on top. And Department of Fish and Wildlife has shown through their fisheries biology studies that those are 50% more effective than the flat style. So if you're going to get one, you know, there's costs and benefits. These literally cost more than the flat style, but they'll yield more as well. So this is what we recommend. This is our last one. We're using chicken for bait because sea lions like to raid crab traps that are baited with seafood. How's the price on that chicken? Chicken's $1.59 a pound and seafood's about seven bucks for uh, squid. So it's a much better deal too. And you can get chicken anywhere at the last minute if you forget to get your bait. So the lines are 100 feet, but by the time you tie the knot on each end, you lose about 10 feet. So we're fishing in 70. All right, we dropped the pots. Now we're going to go try to do a little fishing. Oh man, it's just a baby ling. Oh, yeah. Yep. Uh -huh. That's cool though. Yeah. Hey, easy, 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 easy. Little crazy ling. That's cool though. Good sign, good sign. I missed him. Oh, he's real small. Yeah, he's real small. I guess he's not that small. Hmm. Sure. 
He got an octopus in his mouth. You want to use that as bait? I don't know. Probably love it, man. Look at that. Mm -hmm. Let the fish go. She looked like she was pregnant, so. Little gopher. Guy's eye is all distended. He's all full of air bubbles and everything. I'm gonna keep that guy too then. Cause I don't think his eye is gonna make it back. Huh, another green ring. Nope. How about that? Another male too. Yeah. Cool though. Yep. Bye bye. Nice red, man. Good. Awesome. Look at that. I got a pair of them. Hey, really? Oh, canaries. Hey, nice, man. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> we getting this on film? Yeah, man. Yeah. All right. There it is. That jig sure works. Very nice. Man, what a beaut. Look like us. Oh, that's got some weight for sure. Nice, man. Hell yeah. There, huh? Oh, man. That's awesome. Awesome. Ooh. Dude, look at that. Yeah, that's a big crab. <laughs> nice. All right, so round one, we already got five legal crab, one pot. So how many more three pounds? Three of them were jumbos, weren't they? Or oh jumbos? yeah, dude. Three of them, I was like, we don't even need to gauge these. They're huge compared to that small one. The small one was also legal. <laughs> oh, 25 feet down there. No kidding, and you can already see it? Yeah. Oh, man. Oh yeah, dude, look at that. That is awesome. Oh, man. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Ooh, look at that. That thing is bad. You got that gauge just to show that it's a gauge breaker. Look at that. It's got to be seven inches. Beautiful. Another good one. Fifteen. A little bit on the smaller side. It's legal though. It's legal. Is that sixteen? Sixteen. Yep, that's heavy. Oh yeah, look at that, man. Yeah, it sure is. Man, that is awesome. The size of this bad boy, bam. Not 
bottles. And then you want to fill up an extra 20 pounds of trap. Right. Thanks. That's 19, I think, isn't it? Uh, Is that 20? Maybe. Let's count them. We pretty much limited out in the first two pots, but we were uh, looking through, just trying to get a last little count here. Two limits. Nice, dude. <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah, man. Boom. <laughs> All right, so before we split, a few tips on crabbing. So you want to keep a heads up for any boats in the area because you're going to be pulling traps. You're going to be paying attention to those traps. What are some other things that you want to pay attention well, to? Well, watch out for floats and watch out for floating line because some people don't use sinking lines or put sinkers on their lines. And when you cruise by, you may snag it with your prop, and that's a problem. It is totally illegal to pull someone else's pot. What Correct. do you do if you see somebody else's pot? Do you drop one next to theirs? Do you drop one at a distance? What do you? What is your yeah, general? Yeah, I try to stay at least 100 feet away, and uh, 100 yards is probably better, but... If you're in a real great spot and everybody's fishing hard, then you know just center yourself away from everybody else as much as you can. When you drop your, your traps, do you mark your spots? Always on my GPS. And then you uh, can find your way back and find your pot. It'll get you so close that you wouldn't be able to miss it. It looks kind of haphazard and everything in the bow of the boat, but we have a system down where I'm pulling the trap my dad's coiling up, coiling up the line, or he's pulling the trap, I'm coiling up the line. We put it all back in the trap, and that way it's not sitting around by our feet. And why is that important? Well, if you've got a weighted crab trap and it hooks on a rock and you're uh, in the wind uh, and it's around your ankle because you stood in the loop, that could become a problem. A commercial boat 20 years ago that was going out and set their pots and uh, they hit some waves and the guy got caught up in his lines as the boat heeled over to the side and uh, he went in with the crab pots and he, he didn't make it. So it is a very real hazard. Um, also wear your life vest. Uh, you know, if you've got enough weight, it's still gonna pull you down, but at least if you can get free, it should shoot you back to the surface. Back in the greens, back in the woods. That's a nasturtium green right there. I've shown you that before. An invasive species. Look at the beautiful flowers. Also totally edible. Nice little spice to these flowers. It's like floral and spicy at the same time. Plus a beautiful garnish. You'll find these in like top-notch restaurants on salads and things because, well, I mean, that's a pretty beautiful contrast for plating. What's cool about these is your nasturtium is invasive grows all over the place and beyond the leaf and beyond the flower the seed pods are also edible and what we can do with those seed pods is we can pickle them and we can make something that we refer to as California capers
All right, for the salad, it's just a simple little skewer here. Balsamic vinaigrette on the outside, a little salt and pepper, grape tomatoes, fresh basil, fresh mozzarella balls with a bunch of herbs and deliciousness all over it. Straight out of the coals, ready to go. Italian herb encrusted Dungeness crab. And the main course, got that rockfish piccata with uh, wild capers. First things first, getting into that Dungeness. Get right into the body meat here. Dude, all those herbs, all that garlic, everything just got right in there. So you gotta use ample olive oil to get all those flavors to infuse, but that is freaking delicious. Just look at that meat. <laughs> it's really key to crack each one of these digits before you throw it in the aluminum foil so that all that flavor gets infused in there. I like to use the tip of one of the, uh, the legs to get right in there to get the meat out. How about that claw? <laughs> yeah, baby. Rock crab is delicious, but Dungeness crab is next level. Salad sickle. Careful, don't poke yourself. Dude, that is so fresh. Now this one, I've been, I've been thinking about doing this for years. So I want to get right in here. I want to get a big bite. It's one of those California capers right on top. It's got all that garlic, white wine, butter, salt and pepper, herbs, and, uh, and the lemon in there as well. That is amazing. I mean, like, that crab, I would have been totally content. Crab in the salad, boom. Beautiful. But this on its own is fantastic. Shout out to Laura Vitali. Thank you for the recipe. Mm. This is outstanding. Those little capers. They have so much flavor. It's like bursting with this lemony, briny kind of citrusy thing. It's really good. It tastes like a, a slightly spicier caper. There you go, invasive capers. Oh my gosh. I am absolutely making that again. Well, there you have it, folks. That's something you can do with Dungeness crab, like the day after, you know, you catch one, you eat a whole Dungeness boil, and then the next day you're like, what do I do with my pre-cooked crab? That's what you do, and you can do it in the oven, too. Just put it on a baking sheet, put it under the broiler, just bring it up to heat, you're good to go. That fish piccata, you gotta try that. Thank you for watching. Please remember to give us a like, subscribe, and all that good stuff. And until next time, keep the old ways alive. In my next video, we'll continue with my new series, An Introduction to Freediving and Spearfishing California, as we go diving Northern California for Dungeness Crab. For the past few months, the open ocean has been absolutely rocking and rolling. The swells have been far too big for any kind of safe open ocean diving. So in the meantime, I've been focusing on the calm waters of the back of some of our bays. These bays offer a great opportunity for new divers to work on the basics, learning how to clear your ears, clear your mask, clear your snorkel, working on duck diving, more efficient streamlining of your body, and proper kicking. Here you can see Rodrigo making one of his first duck dives from the surface to retrieve the GoPro. The calm waters of our bays offer a unique and safe experience where you can see a number of different marine animals, but at the same time, focus on the basics. Towards the end of these outings, we focus on the shallows for a little bit of snorkel foraging. Specifically, we're going for bay mussels and even native oysters.
If you're interested in learning how to spearfish, you've got to start somewhere, and these experiences in the back of the calm waters of the bays provide new divers a strong foundation. Use the plug, right? <laughs> <laughs> 